Finland allows Ukraine to attack targets in Russia with Finnish weapons. Ukraine can use the weapons transferred by Finland to attack targets on the territory of the Russian Federation. The Finnish side has not imposed any restrictions on the arms assistance provided to Kyiv. The corresponding statement was made by the head of the Finnish Defense Ministry, Antti Hakanen Yeli, informs. According to the minister, the restrictions on the use of their weapons were mainly imposed by those countries that supplied Kyiv with long-range weapons. The Finnish parliament's defense committee said that the Ukrainian army had the right to attack military facilities on Russian territory with the help of weapons supplied by Helsinki. In particular, this was said by the head of the committee, Juka Kopra. Deputy head of the committee, Mikko Savola, also noted that the weapons supplied by Finland can be used by the Ukrainian army for strikes against targets in the Russian Federation. At the same time, he adds that the range of the weapons supplied by Finland is not very long. In general, the Finnish authorities are in constant contact with their allies on the issue of restrictions on weapons transferred to Ukraine. Finnish President Soli Ninisto, who is leaving office, has promised that his country will continue to increase military aid to Kyiv. Ninisto said Finland has provided Ukraine with 22 aid packages and will not limit itself to this. We are increasing aid, primarily, of course, military aid. This especially concerns ammunition and air defense assets. Everyone agreed that we need to act as we did at the beginning of 2022 when decisions were made in a timely manner and very quickly, Ninisto stated. U.S. border a bigger priority than Ukraine. Republican leader, Congress will not pass a new aid package for Ukraine without reforms to U.S. immigration policy. House Speaker Mike Johnson has said, arguing that America's own security takes priority over Kiev's conflict with Russia. Speaking after a contentious meeting with President Joe Biden and congressional leaders, Johnson insisted that House Republicans would not budge on the foreign aid if Democrats did not compromise on the border. GOP lawmakers are actively pursuing and investigating all the various options for the Ukraine legislation, but the first priority of the country is our border and making sure it's secure. Johnson told reporters the Republican speaker has faced increased pressure from congressional Democrats, the White House and even fellow GOP members in the Senate over the aid bill, with President Joe Biden warning that the consequences of inaction every day in Ukraine are dire. Ahead of his meeting with Johnson, Democratic Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, who attended the sit-down with Biden, also said he urged Johnson to get it done and do the right thing, adding that history is looking over your shoulder. He described the discussion around the Ukraine bill as intense, stating everyone in that room was telling Speaker Johnson how vital the military assistance was. While the Senate previously passed a $95 billion aid package, including $60 billion for Kiev in addition to funding for Israel and Taiwan, House Republicans have refused to back companion legislation unless it includes significant reforms at the U.S.-Mexico border. Estonia plans 600 bunkers to stop Russian invasion in the first hour. On NATO's borders with Russia, frontline states are already preparing for the next war with Moscow. In January, the defense ministers of Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia agreed to a new plan to build an extensive network of fortifications intended to deter and defeat the kind of Russian incursion long feared in northeastern Europe. Given their country's 210 miles of border with Russia, much of it considered near impassable thanks to extensive forests and wetlands, Estonian officials said the government is planning some 600 bunkers they hope will prevent a hypothetical invasion and occupation by Moscow. The war in Ukraine has shown that taking back already conquered territories is extremely difficult and comes at great cost of human lives, time and material resources. Susan Lilevali, the Under Secretary for Defense Readiness at the Estonian Defense Ministry, said she spoke about the $64.7 million project during a Thursday briefing with journalists. 
In addition to equipment, ammunition and manpower, we need physical installations to defend our countries efficiently. Lilevali said the small Baltic states have long been considered the most likely Russian targets should President Vladimir Putin be bold enough to launch an attack on NATO. If successful, Russian units might be expected to overrun the three small nations within days. These installations serve, first, the purpose of avoiding military conflict in our region as they could potentially change the enemy's calculus, Lilevali said. Counter-mobility and fortification measures have played a significant role in wars in our region in history, for example in Finland, and as the war in Ukraine has demonstrated, they are perfectly valid also in this century. She continued, the installations should deny the enemy the possibility to advance rapidly in the territory of Baltic countries and in case of military incursions, stop the enemy's advance already at our borders.